We continue to follow the breaking news out of Placer County and a suspect at the center of a 24 hour manhunt man hunt has been found. Eric J. Abril. Placer County deputies say Eric Abril is back in custody and KCRA 3's Lizay Mitri just arrived on the scene. This is on Zion Court, right Lizay in Rockland? We're on Zion Court. It's in the area of Sunset and Whitney. If you're familiar, this is a residential area. You can see Rockland Police Department parked outside. Right now they're parked outside of this home, but where the search really was focused was behind these homes. There's a creek and it appears that that is where uh, law enforcement was able to find the suspect. It sounds like he was still wearing those orange jail pants, shirtless, uh, and, and like I said, it, it sounded like he was in the middle of the creek. This is not far from uh, the areas where we had heard he was last seen. He was seen on surveillance video in on uh, Rainier Avenue. Uh, and uh, again, this is in the, the same area, those Rockland neighborhoods, uh, neighbors have been checking their cameras and keeping their doors locked, windows closed and everything, uh, worried with this guy on the loose. But at about 1230, we heard word that they may have found their guy. And as you can see, there's a big police scene out here, a lot of neighbors kind of out looking and uh, some had, had we're out here actually when they saw law enforcement and they say, you know, the law enforcement officers told them they pulled him out of the creek. And uh, now a, a lot of neighbors for sure relieved to hear that this may be the end of this massive manhunt. Now more than 24 hours after this murder suspect escaped Sutter Roseville Medical Center. Reporting live here in Rockland, Lizay Mitri, KCRA 3 News. And and so Lizay, just a couple of quick questions. I, I overheard some of the neighbors there just starting to divulge to you and tell you everything that they had experienced in the last 24 hours or so. One even saying that he maybe knocked at their door or went to their house or something like that. Yeah, we haven't even had a chance yet to talk to any of the neighbors. We just pulled up and are bringing you this live report. Uh, we briefly heard from one neighbor who uh, said that it sounded like he had seen this man in the area. Uh, and like we said, we saw surveillance video uh, from about 339 shortly after his escape uh, that Abril was caught on surveillance video. So it definitely seems like he had been in the area. Uh, the police, Pol Placer County Sheriff's Office said there were more, over 60 tips in the last more than 24 hours that they had to investigate, checking areas behind different homes, focusing on those open spaces, wooded areas, which ultimately is where they found him uh, in an area behind the homes uh, near a creek. That's very interesting. So it seems like they pretty much had it narrowed down, and I know that they were continuing their aerial search, right? Right, we're not seeing any of that right now. Uh, yesterday, we, you know, saw helicopters, drones, uh, SWAT vehicles. Um, that's not here now. Uh, things moved pretty quickly. Basically, as soon as they found their suspect, uh, those vehicles moved out. Now there are just a few Rockland uh, police patrol cars parked in this uh, small cul-de-sac and, you know, still in the area. But but the big scene, uh, they, they moved in and out pretty quickly out here. So, uh, and Lizay, we are going to continue to stay on air with this. And it looks like a lot of the neighbors are starting to come out right now. Oh yeah, everyone noticed, as you can imagine, when all uh, all these law enforcement vehicles kind of descended on this area. They they were like you mentioned. Some of the neighbors had seen that he was in the area. Everyone has been on high alert. So when they saw a police presence like this, everyone came out, you know, knowing that clearly something was uh, going on. And luckily, in this case, it was that they have found their suspect. Mm-hmm.
Um, and like I mentioned, Lizzie, we are going to stay on the air if there's someone that you want to talk to live. I know I, I overheard you talking to some of the neighbors. Um, feel free to grab them. In the meantime, I want to go back over and show you that surveillance video that Lizzie was mentioning uh, so we could give her a few minutes. Again, he, w he was spotted overnight at, at Rainier. They had that surveillance video at Rainier, and there you can see him uh, walking. Looks like this is like a backyard area um, with no shirt Will on. that work? And yeah. those still, or those orange pants on. There you can see it again. And as, um, as Lizzie mentioned, they had a feeling that, yeah, he was still in that neighborhood, kind of walking in that back um, wilderness area where they've got the creek running through the backs of, of the home in the backyards there um, and so that's where they were able to pull him out of the creek literally at about 1230 today so just about 30 minutes ago but in, in the meantime it was an intense past 24 hours since he was able to escape the Sutter uh, Roseville Memorial Center the Sutter Roseville Hospital I should say that was about 330 in the morning on Sunday and then again they had that surveillance video from Rainier Court I just want to give you a, an update if you're just tuning in in a and background on Eric Abril and why he was considered so dangerous because he was arrested for a deadly shooting and hostage situation back in April in Roseville at Mahaney Park. In that incident, he is charged with attempted murder of an officer and killing a 72 year old man, a hostage. He killed the hostage, allegedly, according to officers. Again, that's why he was arrested. That hostage was James McKeegan. And McKeegan's wife was also taken hostage. She was injured in the shooting, but did survive. Investigators say the couple was just innocent bystanders there at Mahaney Park. They were caught in the confrontation. And at that time, back in April, CHP officers were trying to serve a Brill a search warrant for a freeway shooting and he was already a convicted felon. So we're also told by law enforcement that he had been in the hospital for a couple of days, but they haven't told us, or for some time, but they hadn't told us why. And they do say that the officer was not asleep and that he was somehow able to get out of his restraints and escape the Sutter uh, Roseville Hospital. So that's when it all started about 24 hours ago, and now it's all come to an end. I know personally from all of the emails, text messages, uh, DMs that I've gotten from people who live in Placer County in the Roseville, Rockland area that were very concerned because, again, this is someone who officers believe and have charged with the murder of a hostage in another situation, uh, which is, you know, it's a very dangerous crime. So um, that's why they, you know, obviously any suspect who, is, uh, any inmate who escapes is very serious but this one in particular especially because when that incident happened at Mahaney uh, Park back in April he was he was already a convicted felon already so that 24 hour more than 24 hour manhunt is now over as they have found the escaped inmate Eric J Abril they found him near Zion Court in Rockland and do we have KCRA 3's Lizay Mitri uh, is she going to become available for us to go back to her? All right, she is talking to neighbors, and I can just tell you from overhearing over our microphones what some of the neighbors were, were telling her, and we'll get it from them firsthand coming up in a minute, but you know that I, I think one of them was, was saying that um, that that he had come by their house or maybe knocked on something or something like that. This video right now coming into the newsroom and this is the actual uh, moment when they took a grill back into custody and it looks like that's him standing there without the shirt on uh, because again he didn't have a shirt on he just had on those orange inmate pants and you can see pretty calm situation at this point he is surrounded by several law enforcement officers again they had more than 70 law enforcement officers uh, working on this case in the last 24 hours as they considered this an extremely dangerous person on the loose in in these communities. Uh, very scary for people who live in these communities. All right, I think we do have Lizzie Mitri uh, ready for us again. And Lizzie, I appreciate the hustle. What have you learned in the last few minutes? Yeah, we're here with a neighbor. We wanted to let you hear for yourself. This is Enoch Storm uh, in the area. And tell me again uh, where you live and what brought you here. I live on Saddle Tree, uh, about three blocks away. And uh, apparently th this fellow was uh, at the, our neighbor's house across the street. And uh, apparently he was, they woke up at 3.40 in the morning or sometime. And uh, they, their bedroom was right next to a, a little gate that they have on their 
on the side of their yard and it was rattling and I guess it woke them up and that's another neighbor told me that. Um, uh, anyway, I searched my yard uh, yesterday uh, you know, under some trees and in the, the horse uh, barn and looking to, to see if nobody was there. I mean, if anyone was there, and I didn't find anybody, but I'm concerned about, you know, people along the creek on Rainier that uh, anybody can just walk along and go in and look for a bike to take and put some miles between them between us and whatever, but he was this, this close, just a few, three, four blocks away from us. Yeah, I was just curious, and I just, uh, that's all I know. So you came just to see what it was like. How are you feeling now knowing that he has been caught? I feel good about that. Uh, justice needs to be served, and he uh, he's going to get to the bottom. Uh, he's going to go back to jail, and... Uh, serve his time. He did kill somebody last year, I think, a 72-year-old man, and maybe shot his wife, too, and she survived, fortunately, over in the park in uh, Roseville. That's all I know about him. But I'm glad he's uh, off the streets again, and it's too bad that uh, he got out of the hospital so easily or whatever. Somehow he avoided detection, but him being barefooted and walking around 3.40 in the morning or before or after even, and light was going to be coming up. It's just, uh, oh, I'm glad he's caught. Glad he's caught, and, uh, he, and it sounds like he's a dangerous guy. Um, that's about all I'm up. That's the end of my story. Thank you. Thank you, Enoch, and thank you for joining us. And yeah, like we mentioned, a lot of neighbors feeling that relief knowing that the search is over. Reporting here in Rockland, Lizzie Mitri, KCRA 3 News. Yeah, that was very interesting information. So that's Antelope Creek that's running behind there. And I just looked on the map and driving wise, it's it's only about 2.9 miles from Sutter Medical Center. So he really didn't go really didn't go that far, Lizzie. Yeah, and there are a lot of walking trails, a lot of green space, and that's where it seemed like law enforcement had been focusing uh, for those reasons. Uh, you know, just a lot of places, opportunities to hide, uh, mm -hmm. to get from place to place without being in the open, uh, you know, on a public sidewalk or anything, uh, more kind of hanging out in those wooded areas. And ultimately, yeah, they appears they've found him near the creek. Uh, you can see it looks like they were kind of going through this home to the back side uh, where that creek is located. Yeah, and that, that creek, Antelope Creek, kind of runs uh, parallel with Pacific Street and it, you know, it kind of crosses under Highway 65. So Sutter Medical Center is on, from where Lizay is, it's on the other side of Highway 65 and the other side of I-80. So he definitely d had to do some trekking barefoot, uh, as that neighbor said, and which is pants on and a shirt. But man, a neighbors, Lizay, were extremely alert. And as you mentioned, a ton of tips came in in just a short amount of time. Yeah, we were in uh, the area of Rainier Avenue and Saddle uh, Back Saddle Tree Lane earlier. That's where that uh, surveillance video came out at about 3:40 when he was. Uh, last seen uh, the morning of the escape yesterday morning and neighbors there were still you know very nervous we talked to a family her kids were kind of scared and uh, they were just talking about how normally you know it's a very safe community sometimes they don't even lock their doors but that was not the case uh, once they heard that he had been in their neighborhood uh, just a very different feeling everyone um, on high alert keeping those doors locked and staying inside and, and can you tell us just again in summation what that neighbor just told you live here on KCRA 3 for people who are just tuning in Right, so that neighbor, Enoch Storm, he lives in that area where that initial surveillance video came from. He, all those neighbors have been talking, uh, you know, telling everyone to check their cameras. There were a lot of homes in that area that had security uh, footage, which was very helpful to police. And so they were all communicating with each other, uh, telling them, you know, check your camera. Have you seen anything? So that's what he was talking about. He was hearing 
from some of his neighbors who thought they might have heard something in the backyard. And, you know, some of his neighbors did see a Brill uh, in their area on their cameras. So he's, you know, been nervous, been keeping watch. And so when he found out that the suspect may have been caught, he wanted to come to this area, even though he lives a bit uh, away from here. He wanted to see what the scene was like over here. And again, he was kind of surprised that it was still pretty close to his home. Relatively close. All right, Lizay Mitri, thank you for all of that. We'll get back with you in just a minute. But in the meantime, we want to go to KCRA 3's Mike Tassell, who was there when they took a brill into custody, right, Mike? Yeah, so I'm standing behind the Edgewood Apartments, that area where you can see uh, that Rockland police are still here. And it's a green belt area. So you have the apartments here, the carport. This is where I drove up to as soon as I heard a word that he may be in custody. And as soon as I rounded the corner and saw this right here is where all of the uh, activity was the Placer County Sheriff's Department SWAT team members and of course the Rockland police all here and they were focused on this area as this is where uh, they the, the, the green belt area right behind uh, the apartments this is where uh, all of the cars were parked and then I caught up with it right as they had this uh, suspect being put uh, into uh, the Placer County Sheriff's vehicle. But you can see uh, behind me just how wooded and uh, green this uh, area is behind me. And again, we're showing you that video of when I first arrived here on the scene. And so again, that was within the last you know, 15, 20 minutes, I would say, uh, that got word right as I was pulling into Rockland, as a matter of fact, and then uh, came straight over here, saw the activity, ran to the back of the apartment complex, and that is when they had him in custody, or at least a person matching uh, the description with the tattoo of him in custody, putting him into that vehicle. Uh, he appeared to have uh, uh, some sort of uh, scrapes and wounds on him, which could have been with the scuffle of them apprehending him and putting him into the vehicle. And then uh, once he was secured in the vehicle, then uh, SWAT team members actually walked along with that uh, vehicle as it started to back out and then leave this complex escorted by another uh, Placer County uh, Sheriff's vehicle. So uh, all of it unfolding here. Again, this is in that green belt right behind these apartments. These are the Edgewood apartments. Uh, and again, it, it was quite the scene as a lot of residents here were out with their phones saying, did they catch him? Did they catch him? Did they catch him? And uh, law enforcement uh, looking clearly uh, satisfied and maybe even relieved that this uh, individual now in custody. Yeah, and Mike, another neighbor that was just talking to Lizé pointed out something that, you know, had he been able to maybe steal a bike or something, he could have got some miles between, you know, the location from where he escaped and an officer. So it's very fortunate that he was staying so close relatively within just about a two to three mile area of where where he walked away from that hospital. Well, and one of the things that they were clearly search, uh, focusing on when this first uh, happened was those bike trail and green belt areas, because as mm -hmm. you can see, uh, it does offer the camouflage, it offers mm -hmm. cover, and especially if you're barefoot, no shirt, wearing you know orange pants, and maybe shackles uh, on, uh, it's all something where you know person's not going to be traveling very fast unless they have a means to communicate with someone else to be an accomplice. But it appears uh, from this scene, at least. Uh, right when I arrived here that he was alone and that he was uh, clearly apprehended by those uh, who spotted him back here and this is where it all went down very quickly Lisa. Yeah and it's scary to think how close he was to all those homes and especially those apartments you know where you've got a lot of families and, and children they've got to be pretty relieved there Mike. And throughout yesterday, you know, the helicopter is flying overhead and you hear the uh, loudspeaker, the bullhorn saying, you know, mm -hmm. we know you're there. Come out with your hands up. Here's the thing. That helicopter was going from neighborhood to neighborhood announcing the same thing. So it really was a feeling of perhaps they don't know what neighborhood he is in. But this is an area they were over yesterday, uh, not too far from Johnson Spring View Park. If you know where the Dutch Brothers Coffee or the Dutch Bros is yeah. here in uh, Rockland, it's just right around the corner. You take two rights and then uh, you're basically at this apartment complex, which backs up to the green belt here. Uh, and so, you know, it's it, uh, a lot of activity, a lot of businesses, a lot of apartments, a lot of residents in this area. So a sigh of relief that this is an individual that was apprehended before 
gained access to getting into someone's residence or car and then getting away further. Well, and, and Mike, and I know you, you've covered this from the beginning, from the, the Mahaney Park incident and, and the shooting death of that, uh, you know, that hostage. Um, this is someone, you know, when you consider the, the charges, he was arrested for the deadly shooting in the hostage situation, and he's charged with attempted murder of an officer and killing a 72-year-old hostage. This is someone, again, facing charges of attempted murder of an officer. So it's pretty remarkable that, that he was being, he was able to be taken into custody with no incident because this is someone who clearly, you know, has no problem, you know, according to the accusations against him of, you know, firing at, at officers. And one of those unknowns in this whole thing, Lee says, you know, he uh, obviously uh, getting out of the hospital, but you don't know, did he equip himself with anything? Was he armed with anything? Right. Did he have any means to try and overpower someone other than just physically uh, once he got out and was on the run? So, uh, you know, uh, I don't know exactly the circumstances of how they found him here and then ultimately apprehended him here and got him to the truck. I got here when they got him to the truck and were putting him in. But very fortunate for those living in this area that it was not a you know regular person like myself or another resident in this area who just happened to come upon him and then had to uh, be confronted by him on the run better it be law enforcement and especially those uh, heavily armed and equipped SWAT officers in this area to respond to that and to get this uh, uh, person into custody. Absolutely, and especially because people use the, those trails and they're they're by that creek a lot. You know, it's a heavily recreated area, especially when it's such comfortable temperatures out there. We want to show you a, a map, and Mike, I want to keep you on here of Zion Court, and there you can see that green belt right behind Zion Court that, that Mike is referring to and that he was showing us. And Mike, how long specifically was he in the hospital? Do you know? It was for a little bit, but we don't know why, right? Uh, you know, it was several days ago, and yeah. yeah, they haven't released exactly why he was in the hospital. And mm -hmm. of course, uh, you know, talk among residents here is, is even though the sheriff said there's a lot of questions and there's going to be a full investigation, uh, and they released a statement saying it was clear the deputy wasn't asleep, that suggests they know something about how this person got out of the hospital. So hopefully we'll learn more about that now that they have him back in custody. We can start uh, getting some answers to those questions. But I also want to point out, you were mentioning how a lot of people are out here a lot of people walk in this area. Mm -hmm. If you remember, we're not that far from the old Sunset Whitney golf course. If you yeah. remember that golf course, that was turned into basically walking paths or biking paths or a place that a lot of people like to walk their dogs. And that's not very far from here. And so, you know, people are active. Johnson Springview is not far from here. That is, of course, a middle school. Uh, it's also got a dog park there and a lot of tennis courts and open fields. So, uh, uh, ultimate frisbee as well so you know people are active around this area and it is quite fortunate that right. where they apprehended this individual again wasn't somewhere where he was confronting unarmed and right. otherwise innocent people just living in this area and uh, I, I can't stress it enough that i uh, just knowing the amount of chatter that was going on as soon as word started getting out that, hey, they may have gotten him, they may have gotten him. Yeah. There's a huge sigh of relief for this mm -hmm. entire community, especially here in Rockland, because if you remember uh, watching our coverage yesterday, the first uh, uh, sign of him being outside the hospital was that ring camera, which is not that far from where we are. In fact, it would make some sense that he would be in this area because it's still that same green belt area. But they were also focusing a lot of their search just on the other side of the freeway, but still in Rockland, off of Rockland Road near Sierra College. So, you know, just the general sense in Rockland was he's somewhere in Rockland. They can't find him. Yeah. Well, they did. Yeah, 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 it was a pretty unnerving more than 24 hours for all those residents. And I'm also just so thankful that no one was hurt at the hospital when he did escape, you know, that that, you know, there was no confrontation with with any doctors or nurses or other patients or anything like that. So um, a, a lot of positives to take away from this and that um, no one else, you know, ran into him accidentally or, or confronted him. So and that he is now back in custody. Mike Desell, thank you for your hustle and your hard work on this. We appreciate it. In the meantime, we want to get over to KCRA 3's Brittany Hope live at the Placer County Jail with the latest in, in a statement uh, from Abril's lawyer, right, Brittany? 
Hi, Lisa. Yeah, that's right. So I actually spoke with him yesterday when this manhunt really started to begin, and his statement to me yesterday was really simple. He essentially said that he was just really shocked, and he had hoped that his client would turn himself in. Now, I just got this text within the past three minutes, so his attorney, his name is Matthew, he just said, quote, I am glad he surrendered safely. Again, that is a direct statement to KCRA that we just got within the past few minutes from his attorney, Matthew Bachman, about this. I also did ask if he had spoken with his client yet so far today. He said at this point he has not. We do know that that video that Mike DeSalle got for us on the scene where Erica Brill was being detained, that was about 20 minutes ago. I did map that location from here at the South Placer Court to Zion Court uh, where that all happened just about 20 minutes ago. It's about a 15 minute drive. I do have to tell you that our head is really on a swivel at this point just because so far we haven't seen a large uh, deputy presence or any sort of presence here. So we're really not sure if he's here yet at this point, but we do have a full view around us from the minimum security area over there to the main jail just behind us and the court here. But we have seen a Brill in here in court Re recently when he, you know, was first arraigned. This was back in April on the list of charges that he is facing. And this is where he had been detained all of that time until he was brought to the hospital on Thursday. So again, this is really just developing within the past few minutes at this point from where we are able to go as media. We haven't seen a large law enforcement presence arriving in a sort of caravan that we often see in cases like this. But we can tell you, of course, this is a high security area and we're not able to go behind those gates behind us. So we're just not sure if he has arrived yet, but we are carefully watching. Again, we know his attorney has not spoken with him yet. This just happened in the past 20 minutes, but he said he is glad that this has all happened. He didn't turn himself in. He was caught, but he is in custody. And I do have to tell you earlier today, Lisa, we were at Mahaney Park where back in April, almost three months to the day, this all began and a lot of folks there. This was before we knew that he had been caught, just told us that they were really scared, locking their doors, looking out for their family members. We actually talked to a girl who works at a camp nearby and she takes care of three and four year olds. And today she said, you know, she was really, really concerned knowing that she was one of the main authority over all of these little ones in a place where this happened so close. Another woman who had been working out nearby the park said, you know, ha have you found him? I'm nervous he's going to come back to the original scene of the crime. So yes, this is a community, whether you're in Roseville or Rockland, where people have been on high alert. We know that the chatter online is a lot of statements of relief and of course a lot of questions about how this happened in the first place, but just a powerful past 20 minutes. And again, at this point, just looking around behind us, we have the court, we have the jail, and then we have the minimum security building just behind us over there. Since we've come live, since we've been here in the past 10 minutes, we haven't seen anyone arrive. But again, that doesn't mean he's not here. We're just not able to see it. But the scene where he was detained about 20 minutes ago is about 15 minutes away. So we are watching closely. Lisa. Yeah. And, and Brittany, you're talking about people stopping you and asking you, have they caught him? I mean, I can't tell you, been, I have been flooded with messages and people concerned about this because the, the charges this person who is already a convicted felon is facing, you know, they're pretty scary charges, attempted murder and, and murder of a hostage. Um, you know, this these aren't minor minor alleged crimes um, and, and you know and so there was really truly a desperation from from the community because they were so scared Brittany. I mean, people were terrified. Again, when this happened back in April, a lot of folks say this almost feels like deja vu. Back in April, it was the feeling of, how is this happening here in our community? It's really safe. Three months later, almost to the day, it's happening again. And now the person who allegedly was responsible for all of this was on the loose. Yeah, it was a really intense time. So you can definitely feel the air here just calming down and people taking that deep breath, knowing that he is in custody. Lisa, earlier today, I did go to the McKeegan home and I spoke with the family. Uh, they did tell us that Patricia, James's wife, who is a survivor in all of this, that she is home safe with her family. And at this point, they're really just staying together and supporting each other through all of this. But they are aware of what's been going on, and they say that law enforcement has been by to check on them and support them. We also went to some of the churches that the McKeegans were really involved with today, and essentially the same message. They said that they all knew what was going on, and it's just a really scary message. So, you know, the big message from everyone, folks who knew the McKeegans or not, folks who knew the CHP officer who was shot or not, everyone just said yes they were scared but they were really thinking about the victims in all of this and I think that's a powerful testament to this community whether it's Roseville whether it's Rockland people have really been thinking of those folks so it's really that collective breath that deep sigh of he's caught but now all those questions remain of how this even happened in the first place.
Is there a possibility now, as, as we're waiting there and you're there at the Plash County Jail, though, is there a possibility, though, Brittany, that they would need to take him back to the hospital for maybe examination? I mean, we still don't even know why he was in the hospital for several days. Is there a possibility that they could be headed there instead of the Placer County Jail? And that's a question that I asked his attorney yesterday. I said, are you able to tell us why your client, Abril, even went to the hospital in the first place on a Thursday? And he wasn't able to tell us why, which we do understand with different HIPAA laws and that client attorney privilege. But yeah, we don't even know why he went to the hospital in the first place on Thursday. So that's a big question mark. We did see in that video that Mike Tassell took, you can see that he was standing upright. We know that deputies found him when he was walking through the creek. So it does seem that he was able to walk um, on his own two legs. We do know that he he did have some scratches and bruises. I know Mike was explaining. We're not really sure if that was from the moments when he was detained or if that was something that he had gotten himself over the past 48 some odd hours when he was really on the run. So it is possible he could be taken to the hospital for a medical evaluation. There's a lot of different questions that are on the table right now. We do know that he is in custody. What exactly that means in terms of going to the hospital, coming here to the jail. I'm sorry, I was just looking to the sign. I, I saw a bunch of cars drive in, but it looks like those are just normal cars. It, it wasn't any sort of law enforcement caravan. We're, we're just being extra careful just to make sure that we're not missing something in case he is brought here. But yeah, traditionally, if someone is arrested, they would be brought here. They would be booked, and then this is where they would be staying. But we do have... Oh, looks like that's just a garbage truck. We're really trying to make sure we stay on top of all the right. things that we're yeah. seeing and hearing. But yeah, if there are injuries, someone could be taken to the hospital. That is really realistic. We're just waiting to hear if that's happening or not. Details are really limited. They, they are really limited and obviously, you know, especially when it comes to medical things, you know, the information is very limited, but um, usually they'd be able to say, you know, something kind of um, um, in generic, but we'll just have to wait on that. Yeah, and I'm also looking at, you know, who's driving up behind you as well. It's still just a, a, a waiting game right now, um, but at least people can be relieved in knowing that we personally have the video. Mike Dazell was personally there, saw him being taken into custody. And so people who really haven't been able, didn't get a lot of sleep last night, as we heard from neighbors that talked to Lizay Mitri, um, you know, just because they were so concerned and people have been scanning their uh, surveillance cameras, you know, they can really just kind of relax now that he is back in custody. I think we're going to continue our team coverage now with KCRA 3's Lize Mitri, who is at Zion Court, which is near the Greenbelt, where he was taken back and in, taken into custody again, right, Lize? Right, Lisa, we just finished an interview actually with the man who is the reason that this, one of the reasons, along with law enforcement's help, of course, one of the reasons that this suspect was caught, Bill Sanchez, the homeowner here, he says he was the one who tipped off law enforcement. Uh, he says basically he went into his backyard to uh, take his dog out at about noon and that's when he noticed the creek behind his house, he saw an orange jumpsuit. And he said the suspect, he couldn't really get a good look at the suspect. He was kind of crouched down in the water at the time. Uh, but as you can imagine, once he saw the jump, jumpsuit, he was pretty sure this was the guy. He went very quickly back into the home, took the dog in, immediately called Rockland police. And he told them, you know, he, he kept telling us, I told them, this is the guy. I saw the orange jumpsuit. This is your guy. He says police got here within minutes. Uh, they went through his garage and into the backyard and approached him. He, he was they say the suspect was still in the creek. Uh, apparently he had taken his orange jumpsuit off. So uh, Bill Sanchez says this man was in his underwear in the creek. The orange jumpsuit was on the ground near him and police approached him, told him, you know, put your hands up or we'll shoot. And uh, apparently he says that he it didn't seem to be a situation where there was any resistance or anything. Police just approached him him right away, uh, arrested him and took him out on the other side uh, towards uh, sunset uh, instead of coming back out the way they came. So that's the story. He just walked us through what happened and uh, wow. pretty, pretty incredible to hear. 
Absolutely, and such quick quick thinking on behalf of Bill Sanchez uh, to you know be able to call them and and their reaction and their quick response time, and that they're really, according to Bill and what he saw, wasn't much of a, a fight. Thankfully, just considering the charges that Abril is facing. So, um, an interesting. I, I was all, I was wondering myself the last 30 minutes. Why didn't he ditch those those orange pants because they're so recognizable? And apparently, he was starting to do that. So it's good they caught him relatively soon after that. Liz Amitri, thanks for your coverage of that. And um, of course, we continue to follow that here at KCRA 3. That breaking news in the big headline is that escape, that escaped inmate, Eric Abril, has been found. He is captured and he is back in custody. We'll be right back.